Oh, no, my wife can fight. I'm not your baby daddy. Let's get that straight right now. This is being recorded. I don't know you. Y'all didn't tell me we was performing on an auction block. I couldn't see this stage from the background. I came with Richard. You look like one of the statues of the Oscars. But how y'all doing tonight? I love being a comedian. I love looking out at all your smiling faces. Some of y'all assumed I was something that I was not, though. I heard somebody whisper, that's the guy that fixed Rebecca's computer. I don't fix computers. I do sell incense, though. Get with me after the show. But I love doing comedy. This is the best job in the world because I cannot be fired. I can say whatever I want. I won't be fired. Because I've been fired before. <laughs> Being silly does not bode well for gainful employment. My first job that I was fired from, I used to work at a funeral home. Because they didn't do background checks. I once threw a hash brown at a lady at a Waffle House. It's hard to hire me. So I was working at the funeral home, and once again, being silly does not go well with gainful employment. It definitely doesn't go well with dead people. So I'm down here working on this lady, Miss Jenkins. She's on the table, and I forgot the dead bodies move one more time. Did you know that? You might have murdered somebody. She shook her head yes too fast. She was like, yep, yeah, got to hit him with the shovel two times. So I'm down here working on Miss Jenkins, and she moves one more time. It's called Final Reflex. And she didn't get up slow like a zombie. She got up like a fish. She said, huh. She hit the floor and I hit the door. My boss said, Lamont, this is a place of peace. You can't run out of here screaming. I said, okay, cool, I'm gonna try it again. The next day I come in, I have an older man. I have Mr. Herbert up here. He's on the table. He looking like himself. I don't know what that means, but black people say it when somebody's dead. He was looking like himself. I get him all sewed up, I get his makeup done, I send him upstairs, and I say, yeah, I'm a good mortician, look at me. All I heard from upstairs was, ah! I was like, why would they be screaming? Ooh, I left his eyes open. I'm gonna try it again. I was not allowed to try it again. We had irreconcilable differences. That's what it's called when you're fired. I could not. Some jobs, you, some jobs I don't get fired from. Some I have to quit, because I don't stand for everything. If you, don't, if you don't stand for something, you're gonna fall for something. I was working at a place that was a call center. It was actually here in Germantown. I'm not gonna mention who they are. <clears throat> Protronics. <laughs> I was working at Protronics here in Germantown, and I walked in, and there was a young lady in my job, and she was smiling too hard for it to be seven in the morning. She was like, hi, you guys, my name is Bethany, woo! I don't know why she wooed. She wooed before we had the chance to. She said, I am a teamwork coordinator. I'm gonna help you guys work together as a team. We're gonna play some games, woo! She wooed like eight more times. <laughs> so she's like, first, before we play these games, I want you to split into two teams. I want you to split into crumple and fold. Everybody's raising their hands. Crumple and fold what, Bethany? Crumple and fold what? She said, when you go to the restroom to wipe, do you fold it over your hand or do you crumple it into a ball? Excuse me? <laughs> Come again and say what? I said, I don't think she just said what I think she just said. I said, repeat that. She repeated it again, the, the gall of her to repeat it again. It turned me into like an angry pilgrim from the 1600s. I was like, silence, foul wench. Hold that bedeviled tongue, speak no longer. Cause who is wiping their butt with a ball of paper, but the room split in half. So now we're in here with the Hatfields and the McCoys, with the Crumplers and the Folders. It did the opposite of build the team. It turned me into a bigot, cause I don't deal with those type of people. Soon as she started the games, I quit my job. She said, shake your coworker's hand. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm leaving and I'm calling 911. <laughs> and I'm not touching the door on my way out. <laughs> and sometimes I don't get fired. Sometimes I don't quit. Sometimes I just do volunteer work, but that, that gets dicey too. There's an old folks out here in Germantown that I like to volunteer at. I volunteer in the memory ward. Y'all know what that is? That's when people have Alzheimer's and dementia. And what they say is if somebody have, is having an episode of Alzheimer's or dementia, do not challenge their reality because it'll cause them to panic. They said, just go with whatever they're saying. But these are old white people. 
sometimes whatever they're saying shouldn't be going along with. I'm sitting in here with a patient, her name is Caroline. Caroline is having a terrible bout of Alzheimer's. And for some reason, she thinks that I am her black lover from 1945. She said, Abraham, my father found out about us. You know we can never be. I think you better leave town. But I am a good volunteer, I'm not gonna challenge her reality. All I need is $100 to start my new life in Chicago. <laughs> And I'm gonna write you every week, I swear to God. <laughs> and we just do that until she calm down and I pay my rent, you know. <laughs> it's a win-win. But I love the elderly, so I've, I've turned into like the caretaker for all the old people in my family. Is anybody else that person where you're like the responsible one for all the old people in the family? My uncle had a massive stroke a week ago and I've been taking care of him. I really wish he would've just passed away. <laughs> it's getting so inconvenient. <laughs> I'm sp I'm having, I have to sponge bath him. I gotta put creases in his pants, which takes like an hour. I'm recording shows that have been off the air for 30 years. You know you've seen every episode of Andy Griffith. Why am I recording this? And I was like, Unc, I wish you would, cause he's single. I wish I was like, you should have got married. That way you would have had a woman to take care of you. He said, there's two things I've never seen. I've never seen a fish with knees or a woman that I need. I said, okay. The problem is he dates these young women. Y'all know the old guy that dates young women. It's, it's kind of gross, but they always keep him around. He had a stroke in front of a 25-year-old woman. Now, I don't know if y'all knew this, but 25-year-old women don't know the signs of stroke. <laughs> My uncle's on the floor dying. What did she do? Pull her phone out. She thought he was dancing. She got my uncle on TikTok in cardiac arrest like, ah, ah, ah. I said, Unc, you went viral. He said, she gave me Corona too? <laughs> but I don't fault him for liking young women. Sometimes you gotta go for something different. You know what they say, different strokes for different folks, opposites attract, that's what Paul Abdul said. I went through a phase where I liked old women and I went to a lounge to go hunt for them because that's where you find them at, that's their habitat. <laughs> old women like saw furniture and chases and jazz music. And I remember the first time I was, I was 18 years old, I moved from my mom's house. I said, I'm about to go get a seasoned woman immediately. So I went to the lounge and I, I found my prey. She was at the bar. I'm making goo goo eyes at her. She looking through her bifocals at me. <laughs> so I roll up on her. Her name was Shirley Ann Jenkins. She was 86 years old. Yes. And I was excited. I've never had a flashback before. So me and Shirley Ann are talking, and she says, baby, would you like to stop by my house for a nightcap? It was 9.30, it was well past her bedtime. <laughs> so I went to her house, and she was like, I'm going to freshen up. So she went to freshen up, which for an older woman, she went to go take a shower, a long shower. She was listening to gospel music in there, blasting Shirley Caesar. The problem was, I got scared because I was looking around her bedroom and I kept seeing old antiques. She had pictures with Martin Luther King, she had original Tiffany lamps. She had a stuffed dog in the corner. <laughs> Here lies Buster died, 1958, Jesus. So I ran out of there and I called her CNA and told her what he was up to. And now I'm married, I don't have to do that no more. Clap if you're married. <laughs> God bless all the married people. Being single is atrocious. It's downright ghetto, I'll never go back to being single. Can you imagine having a hard day at work and coming home to put a fitted sheet on the bed by yourself? <laughs> Isn't that foolishness? How long have you been married? 33 years. 33 years, isn't it lovely? I can't wait till I've been married this long. My grandparents have been married for 58 years. <laughs> they can't stand each other. <laughs> they talk to each other like boxers before a fight. They're just hurling insults, I love it. <laughs> my grandfather was yelling at the cat to get off the counter, and he was yelling for like a good 20 minutes. My grandmother from the back, she said, Larry, what are you yelling for? He said, I'm yelling at the cat to get off the counter. There was a brief pause. She said, that's not the cat, that's my wig. <laughs> I told you you need new glasses. He said, and you need a new wig. <laughs> or you need to take this one to the groomers. <laughs> it's looking a little stray. I love old people. 
the sad part is, I, my, like I said, my grandparents are getting older, so now I'm like getting to that point where I'm scared of losing them because they're in their 80s. We were at the dinner table for Sunday dinner, and my granddad grabbed his chest, and he said, ooh. I said, what's wrong? He said, my chest hurts a little bit, so I called an ambulance. <laughs> You're 85. We're not, we're not rolling the dice on chest pain. <laughs> we're in the hospital, and the doctor's like, oh, my God, Mr. Johnson, you were having a, a massive heart attack. It's such a good thing that your grandson got you here on time. As soon as the doctor leaves, my granddad said, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> the cardiologist doesn't? <laughs> Okay. I said, well, what makes you think the cardiologist doesn't know what he's talking about? He said, I've had five heart attacks. I bet you he ain't had one. <laughs> you do have on-the-job experience, Larry. <laughs> I said, okay, what's wrong with you? He said, I just got trapped gas. Go get me a Pepsi. <laughs> my father is fighting off, the, my grandfather is fighting off the spirit of the death with Pepsi-Cola products, you got. <laughs> like the angels were just coming to get him. They were like, never mind, he's got a Pepsi. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> I made these same jokes at the hospital. My grandmother was not amused. <laughs> She's like, that's not funny. I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> I was like, we can't let him find out about the McDonald's Sprite. He'll live forever. <laughs> they selling electricity in there. <laughs> the hard part about marriage is my, mo not, my mom doesn't know that me and my wife have been married longer than we are. We got secretly married. We eloped. Yes, because that's how you're supposed to do it. It's supposed to just be you and them. And my mom, she's giving my wife all this advice. And my wife already knows the advice now because we've been married. My wife didn't know that men are stupid. Because she had been single for years. She didn't know that men are stupid. You've been married for some time. Your husband was stupid, wasn't he? You got him trained now. <laughs> we were at Olive Garden eating, and the cheese man came by. Y'all know the cheese man. Would you like some fresh grated Parmesan? And I was like, of course, make it snow. He gets a couple of cranks in on the cheese thing, and my wife goes, now, Lamont, you know you're lactose intolerant. And he stopped grating my cheese. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> she said, I know what she said. I want stomach pains. I told you to make it snow. <laughs> I wouldn't eat at Olive Garden if I didn't want an upset stomach. Come on now. <laughs> As y'all can tell, I don't have any common sense. That's why I became a stand-up comedian. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to find things, and we're supposed to skew the perspective. And then we do that all day. Like, I watch a lot of television. That's where I get a lot of jokes from. One of my favorite TV shows to watch is Ghost Hunters. Have y'all seen that show? Yeah. Where young people break into buildings and yell at ghosts and ask stupid questions. <laughs> and it's always the same guys, just really in shape, 20-year-old white guys, trespass and asking loud questions. Who are you? Reveal yourself. Speak to us. I live in, first of all, you have to live in a nice neighborhood to have ghosts. <laughs> I live in the hood. I've never heard about ghosts in the hood. Because bums live in our abandoned buildings. That's who haunts our buildings. <laughs> bums are way scarier than ghosts. I feel like that's who exercises the buildings. I imagine the bums in their sleep late at night, and here comes the poltergeist, get out. And then the bums, spare change. <laughs> and then they just go back and forth. That, you know what I thought about the other day? An interesting thought. Have y'all ever seen a good looking homeless person? Have y'all ever just seen a sexy homeless person? You say, yeah. He was on TV, he was in California, and one of the news people on the street was asking something. I'm finna go Google this. The homeless man was so sexy. How long ago did you watch that video? Oh, I don't know, it was about a long time. It was, he was fine. She remembered that for years. <laughs> Your husband's still alive? She know where to go find the third. He right there on the street. <laughs> she gonna do curbside pickup. Get in, baby. <laughs> you on Shirley's time now. <laughs> but being homeless just might be an ugly person's job, and that's okay. <laughs> Cause if you look good, somebody's gonna help you. And some stuff is for ugly people, some stuff is for pretty, pe pretty people. I feel like R&B music is only for good looking people. Because men who sing R&B music stay, say stuff like, I've been thinking about you all day. You can't sing that if you're ugly. <laughs> Women aren't going for that. Stop thinking about me. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are enjoying yourself. We work hard for this comedy stuff. Sometimes we sacrifice for comedy. I remember I moved to Mississippi. 
And not like Oxford, like some of you guys vacation at to go see games. I moved to like Switch a Ditch, Mississippi. <laughs> I lived in New Albany. That's two trailers, a cow, and like three stray cats. Those, those are the residents and the mayor of New Albany. <laughs> but I was paying $500 for rent for a three bedroom, so I moved there so that I could save money to do comedy. Found out my neighbor Dale was a Klan member. <laughs> it's a couple of y'all in here too, but it's okay. I'm not gonna snitch on you. The reason I found out he was a clam member because I saw him take the robe out of his trunk in the dry cleaning plastic. It was fresh. It was icy white. I was like, oh, you fresh, fresh. I didn't even mind. I was just like, he's stunning on him. But he called the police on me. Something about my grass being too tall. I was mad. I was, ooh, I was livid. I said, how dare he call the police on me? And I was coexisting with this clan member. I'm going to get my revenge. So I'm plotting revenge. I said, what could I do? So I decided to burn a cross on his lawn. <laughs> he would never suspect it. Now, kudos to the, to the clan. It took me three hours to build a cross I was proud of. <laughs> Harder than it looks to build you a serviceable cross. But I got it done, and I snuck out there in, in, at midnight with my eyes and my mouth closed so he couldn't see none of my whites. <laughs> and then I set the cross on fire. And not only did he not suspect it was me, he started accusing other people who were secret clan members on the street. He was like, Bill, Dave, Terry, which one of y'all did this? It's a lot of y'all in this neighborhood. I should probably move. <laughs> My name has been Lamont. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Follow me on social media. I do bar mitzvahs. I do corporate retreats. I do funerals.